Happy days with HB Ice Cream and the Ray Darcy Show. Uh, Arthur Murphy joins the studio. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning, sir. Uh, how are you? Not too bad. Good. You're, you're looking healthy. It's a sunny day. Yeah, it's a nice day, isn't nice. it? In, in, for a change. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Well, no. Yeah, well, that was only one day out of it. Yeah, we had... it makes me miss him. I get depressed. We had the driest September in 20 years. It was a great September. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. Well, we just sit here and discuss the weather. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you got about people griping on about television. We just talk about the weather. Yeah, the reason Arthur's here, of course, is to help us with email bag. If you're watching telly and you see something that excites you or annoys you, let us know about it. And if we include you in the email bag, you get for yourself a bobblehead ray. Um, everybody in position, uh, yes, yep. in good voice, good. Uh, roll the T. Hello, email baggers, and welcome to my wondrously beauteous and baffling, bulging bag of telegripes. It's a bad state of affairs when we have to look for teledrama and erect this report, but it sure beats the plot lines in Carrickstown. Thanks, John O'Donoghue, for all those priceless tally moments this week. The first letter could be from the bull himself, but it's from Ellen Kinsler, who's upset about RTE's racing coverage. Dear Arthur and Ray, did either of you see the fantastic day of racing from Paris on Sunday? The first three horses in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe were Irish. There was a lump in my throat when the first prize went to Michael Canaan and trainer John Ox. They stood to the Irish national anthem. The horses as well? Six times, class one winner never achieved before and probably never again in our lifetime. Surely a proud moment. But this was not being shown on RTE or any Irish television. We had to view this on BBC Two. Instead, RTE was showing a film from the early 50s, which had been aired only in the past few months. And this followed with a constant dribble of reruns for the rest of the day. Oh, don't talk to me about the constant dribbling. It's the bane of me life. Is it too expensive to show a proud Irish moment? Could we not have held back on some of the Lisbon money for this production? Please find out why we were are subjected to such rubbish when the Irish are making history on the BBC. Yours, Ellen Kinsler. Here's what RTE told us about Horsegate. A quick game count. Now the number of times unfortunately is, is used. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have the rights to the event. We produced 26 days of Irish racing every year, in addition to also showing Cheltenham and Aintree. The achievement of See the Stars and its Irish trainer and jockey is a magnificent one and was reflected by Orti in significant amounts of coverage on radio, online and in primetime news bulletins. But did you show the race itself? Um, we simply did not have the budget to secure the live rights to this event when the rights were tendered. Unfortunately, we are not always in a position to cover all events. However, we make determined efforts to cover the best of national and international sport for the widest possible audience in what is an extremely expensive and competitive marketplace. That's unfortunate. Now, Yvonne from Leash is puzzled about the size of the old Vic on EastEnders. Hi, Arthur. I'm wondering, now that Sam is back at the Vic, how many rooms are there in the Vic? I'm sure by looking at the upstairs, there are three bedrooms at most. But when you count there, is now ten people living in the Vic. My question is, where do they all sleep? Because Sam and Peggy must need their own room. Please find this out for me. Yvonne, you think too much, my dear. Here's the BBC response to this housing crisis. Hi, there are four bedrooms in the Vic, and now that Sam is back, she shares Peggy's room. As you'll see on screen, Billy and Jay sleep in the living room at the moment. For your information, there's always quite a bit of movement in terms of Vic residents, and in the next few weeks, you'll see Sam and Billy move out, and maybe move back in again. Hope that helps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, EastEnders Press Office. Another soap that's got Alan in a right lather is Spare City. And for once, it's not the dodgy acting, it's the crap parking. Uh, guys, I know this is just a TV show and as such shouldn't be taken too seriously, but I just felt that I had to write into email bag for an answer from RTE about this one. In the first few seconds of last night's episode of Fair City, the, the taxi which brought Charlie back to the street parked in a disabled parking spot. Can they do anything right in Carrickstown? From what I could see, Charlie hasn't become disabled since being in Canada and was well able to get out of the car on his own. Have taxis been given the right to park in disabled spots now or is it just a fair city thing? Alan. Right, fair city. Sort that one out. Clearly, this was just a minor production oversight. Soaps don't always necessarily represent reality. Yeah, don't say. <laughs> Go on. No offence was meant to disabled drivers and no endorsement was intended as to using disabled parking spots illegitimately. All the best. 
You heard the man, kiddies. Don't copy the lifestyle of Fair City Stars or you could end up being a bisexual cab driver who spends 90% of their day either drinking coffee or having pints. Finally, Kathy is confused by CSI, not CSI Vegas, not CSI Miami, but CSI New York. Anyone would be Kathy. There's so many of them. Hi, Arthur. I am a huge CSI Vegas and CSI Miami fan and have just recently started watching CSI New York. In an episode shown a few weeks ago, one of the detectives was shot and at the end of the program, while the CSI team were in a bar making a toast to the detective, shots were fired at the team. Was that the last in the series and is RTE showing repeats? I am just so confused. Please look into this for me. Thanks, Cathy in Mayo. Here's the answer you need, Cathy. We've been repeating series four for the last number of weeks. Hope this helps. Well, that's it for this week. I'm off to lift something heavy with one of my appendages. No, you cheeky pups. I always have a big mug of coffee at this time of the morning. Email bag at todayfm.com for all your queries. Cheers. I enjoyed that. That was good fun. Um, yeah, the, the, the thing about... Um, you have to be so careful if you're producing stroke directing a soap, don't you? Because mm. people watch these things, and oh, they, they do. do uh, you know, if people are driving, for example, without safety belts, or if people are parking in disabled car parks when they shouldn't be. Yeah. But on the other hand, it would be nice if we had a few letters in about some of the very good programmes we do have. <laughs> like, I saw one the other day. I was looking, I was looking at... Here, here, it's, it's, a, it's a series about... It's a series about um, music, you see? Yeah. And it was, it was an interesting little anecdote in it because um, Bach evidently walked 200 miles just to study under this fellow who was the most famous organ player in the whole of Germany. Right. And when he got there, he said he could have the job of assistant on one condition, and the condition was that uh, Bach married the, this fellow's daughter. <laughs> Bach declined the offer because Handel before him had declined her also. <laughs> and according to one of the experts, uh, the present occupant of the, as organist in that particular cathedral yeah. uh, in Germany, he said uh, she was not exactly, um, <laughs> she was much older than either of these gentlemen. Right. She about. wasn't Kelly Brook. She, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she wasn't <laughs> Kelly Brook. <yes. laughs> should, as opposed to an anecdote, should that have been a footnote? <laughs> Maybe. No, just because there's music. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. But it's a very good program. Yeah. Do you think you and I should do a program at the weekends, right? Just an hour. No music. Just myself and yourself chatting away. Uh, about you, your anecdotes from the yeah. past and you could review uh, your favourite. Well, as you've gathered by now, I, I chat quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bit of a gob. <laughs> Arthur, thank you very much. And we'll talk to you next week. If you see something that excites you or annoys you on the telly, let us know about it. And if it's featured in the email bag, you get for yourself a bobblehead ray.